how the private-public partnerships to occur, at least in Cook County. You need help with the increasing demand for health care. The provider basic capacity will exceed. There is a greater need for technology. The technology of monitoring patients at home, telemedicines, monitoring patients and communicating to the various providers how the patient is doing seamlessly in a manner in which the information pushed to them. An instrument is connected to the patient diabetes at home and he, does a blood, he just does a, you know, a, a finger stick and then the blood sugar comes out, it automatically goes into the doctor and it goes beyond a certain threshold, you get a call or a text or email message to the doctor saying that your patient's blood sugar is out of control this morning. That's what we need. We need a telemedicine technology and a communication technology. The days are gone where you say, please go to my webpage and take a look at it. In the present environment, it's all push technology. You've got to push it to me. I will not pull the information from you. Right? So when we go ahead and do all these great web page changes, in five years, that will be a hard of it because nobody's going to get into a web page unless you push information to them as a part of it. And that has to be done. I need help with the handoff because this is the team concept now because we don't have enough people to take care of them. So we hand over patients, what we call a transition is in care. Patients in the inpatient, first the outpatient, ambulatory patient goes into the emergency department, gets admitted, get discharged, get to rehab, gets to the nursing home. How do you connect all the information to them so that we don't repeat it again and again? You ask the same history 15 times and expect the patient to remember and give you all the information you need. There's no reason why we can't transfer the information back and forth. And I don't understand why we cannot do that when you're able to do that. The second part of technology which I am really interested in is, you know the old IBM story, again, I'm going to talk about my age. I'm going to give out my age. When you have the IBM computer first time, you have to buy an IBM printer. It will not work with any other printer. So if you want to buy an IBM, that is what you call market share. Right? Then people said, forget it, we have a common platform. We are going to have, so I can buy an HP computer and an IBM printer or any printers. I can, Epson printer, I can hook it up, it works. It does not work in healthcare today. If I buy a health field, Cerner or Epic, I cannot hook up the best lab system to that because they want me to use their product. Why is that? Why can't have, have a common platform and say, you can buy any product, you can use an inpatient product from, Ep from Epic, and you can have a Cerner product from outpatient, and I can have a lab quest from la lab product, and the pharmacy management system, everything will work with everything else. Otherwise, you are not allowed to put your product in the market unless it's interfaced with other products. Why would we not do that? Why don't technology, not that we don't have the technology to do that, I'm pretty sure you guys are smart. In overnight, you'll be probably able to do this in two minutes. But you don't want to do that. Because once you, you sell me an EMR, you are held hostage. I'm held hostage by you. Because I can't change the EMR anymore. I am stuck to you. I don't have the money or the energy or the enormous complexity to change and train everybody in the new system. So now you come and tell me, Ram, you got to buy my system. Otherwise, this system will not work. Do you know that in Cook County, after we started civilized, we have 25 different freestanding systems, which does not talk to each other. The only way it talks to each other right now is, I go there, do an echocardiogram on a patient, print that, and scan that into the document. 1978, we used to do that, right? That's what we used to do. Scanning was great. Everything looks great. Remember the fax machines? It was great. So you just change, and the technology has got to get a little better for me. I need a better technology on the supply chain and logistics, where I can get a better way of managing my in-time inventory as a part of it. Don't sell me a technology of the, of the uh, a trucking company, because that is not going to work with this. But that's another thing which happened over a period of time. Every time you've got a project, a product, 
which has worked very well in the insurance company or in the banking industry. You just slap a name, a medical name on it, and you try to sell me that. My clerks does not work like tellers in a bank. They are different. So I need a product, a technology to develop a product which will conform to my flow of events in my hospital system. Again, the analogy, I don't want to cut my foot to fit your shoe. I really want you to look at the, the way it has been done over a period of time. I don't want any more revenue enhancement product because the revenue cycle is dead. In another two years, it will be dead because we are moving into risk-based contract. It's all about cost containment and cost cutting. It is not about revenue enhancement anymore. Because at the end of the day, they're going to say, this is your money for population. Ram, you take care of these half a million people in the Cook County. This is the money I'm going to give you. You figure this out. So I cannot get any more revenue enhancement. That's it. That's the money. So it's all about cost containment. But we're still seeing every other day you get an email or somebody trying to tell you, Ram, this is the revenue, revenue product. Please use this. You can get more money out of it. We got to move on. We got to move on from concentrating on the revenue side. We got to move on to the cost containment side because it is all about quality. Quality is given. You know, we used to say, why well, give better quality is to be very expensive. No, that's not true. Right? If you get in the, into the plane, you know, whether you pay the economy class or first class, you reach the destination where you're supposed to reach. I cannot tell you, if you want to reach the destination, you have to give me another $10 more. Otherwise, I'll drop you off in another destination. You know, that is not cooperating. So why would we do that in medicine? Oh, my quality is better, so you have to pay me a little bit more. We saw that. Cranes published an article how the cost of different systems are. They're not nearby. There are about tenfold difference between the two hospital systems in the cost of care. Right? So the brand name which basically adds a value, so I'm going to pay you a little more because I want the, a brand name of the healthcare, fine. But the healthcare is, is not, it's not a, it's all or none. Either you go to the hospital and live or outside and they, they get discharged, or you go to the hospital and get don't care and end up in a box. Whichever it is, the, at the end of the day, the care is, is what it is. And we should not be in this position where we are able to do that as a part of it. The flow of the patient through the healthcare system, it is still a problematic. We can really manage a flow of almost, we can manage a flow of a UPS delivery system better than we manage a flow of patients at the time. So we have no idea where the patient is. In a big, big system, the patient gets lost, right? Uh, the guy comes in there, they tell him, go over to the cashier, or go over here, get the form from here, walk into this thing. We have zero management. I can actually have my Federal Express letter management. I can know where, the, where this is every single day. Then I know about my patient, where the patient is. Technology has got to get up with that. Why can't we do that? Why can't we? If I find a patient basically kind of struggling along the healthcare system, which is so complex, you all know that, it only looks great from outside. Once you become a consumer of healthcare system, trust me, even if you're a healthcare leader, you cannot navigate the system because the system is so complex as you move into that. So why can't we have a tracking mechanism for the patients as a part of technology, right? So these are some of the areas where I really need help as a technology. As you took it. So as you go into this, think about the needs of the healthcare industry, because this is a unique and the greatest opportunity given to both of us. To me as a healthcare leader, to provide quality, cost-effective care with a great patient experience, and your job is to give me the technology I need, what you want to sell, what I need, and give it to me. I'll, we will together make the health system much better. And finally, a word about our, the way we look into our private-public partnership.
I just want to talk a little bit about it. You know, we have we have a little experience in this. We have a core center. I know how many of you have seen it. If you go in a in a Eisenhower Parkway, there's the Root Rosting Core Center. There's an example of private public partnership. It's a Cook County Health System, Rush Medical School, and Rush Hospital basically put together a state of the art great ambulatory system for HIV AIDS. Probably one of the best in the country. So the question is why there is still a lot of projects like that? We have to do two things. I need your private enterprise innovation. I need your ideas to come into that. I got to keep my mission intact, and I need to be make sure that regulatory-wise we do the right thing. We, we need to watch each other, because I cannot just give every to the privatize everything else. And we have seen that what happened in Wall Street in 2008, when we raised the regula regulations, people went nuts. But at the same time, we cannot be as a, as a public hospital system curtailed by the rules and regulations. Some of them are not very, very friendly. And we need to really start looking at the part of it. Would it not be great, for example, this is one of the major areas in the south side of Chicago and west side where a hospital is that the primary care pediatric kids, it's not great that if you do an IMD, the Illinois Medical District, we put together, you know, with the private-public partnership, a great pediatric ambulatory center, which has got all the great things which are involved in this, and you're able to do that. We have three major hospitals next to each other. You know, University of Illinois Hospital, Stroger, as well as Rush. That is a, a great idea for us to do a public-private partnership. I need your innovative technique. I need your brain power. I need your issues in that. At the same time, I need to make sure that the, the distrust we have, that you will not get into public system because one, it's going to take forever and ever to get a contract. And second thing is, I got to pay you in time. So we don't pay you in time. <laughs> right? You, uh, you basically you know, wait and wait for it before I can really write a check for you. I got to get that done better because there's a better trust between us. But this is the greatest opportunity we got, an opportunity which, you, which we should not lose because the ACA gives you finally one chance, one final chance to get our healthcare system back into our we have, should not be very proud of healthcare system because we have left 40 million people outside. Our, our outcomes are not that good. Most expensive, the people cannot even afford. People, this is the only country where people go bankrupt because they have a healthcare, they can't pay healthcare bills. We cannot, this is a great opportunity for us to work. Public-private partnership, technology helping me to get the things done as a part of it. So, we together, we together will add a, we'll have a healthcare system that adds value to it. The center economy, it, it gives a better value to our patients and to our taxpayers. We together build a healthcare system that wipes out the disparities in healthcare that exist today in our country. We together will build a healthcare system that will sustain for years to come. We together will build a healthcare system that will leave no one behind. And we together will build a healthcare system that will be a legacy for our children and grandchildren. Thank you for the opportunity and great talking to you this morning. Thank you, Dr. Raju. I want uh, Poonam and Ellen to come up here. Take questions. <laughs> oh, questions. Questions. Okay. okay, okay. Who's got questions? I'm a surgeon. I don't bruise easily, so you can ask me any questions. There's one back here. All right, good. Yeah. Somebody? Yeah. You have a question? There's one in the yeah. back there. Back? Yes, sir. Go ahead and stand up and ask a question. Yeah, hi. How are you? I'm sorry. Well, you talked a little bit about uh, you know, medical records, but <clears throat> get a question. Where do you think this is going as far as a, a, a longitudinal medical record where you go from Rush, Cook County, mm -hmm. Northwestern? and your record follows you, and what role do you see the uh, health information exchange playing into all of that, in addition to extending that into the home from a telemedicine standpoint? So there's a lot of moving, mm -hmm. moving pieces there. Where do you see that? You know, I, that you're right, because uh, 
uh, we have this uh, great meaningful use, right, which is a federal government program, which is a great program. I'm not, I'm not doing that. That is basically, I don't know whether, uh, in, in 1970s in New York, when you, you ever leave New York in 1970s, you keep $10 in your pocket. It's called mug money. The mug money is if trying to want to mug you, you give the $10 and get out, right? To me, the meaningful use looks like a mug money, right? Basically, providers are supposed to do a good job of keeping records and making sure the records follow people. The government come and say, you know something, you are not doing a good job, but if you do this, I will pay you money, right? And we got the money for that, right? Everybody, including Cook County, got the money. The issue is this. I cannot transfer the program because there is Epic is in, uh, in uh, Rare Rush. I have Cerner. VA has got their own homegrown program as a part of it. The Home Health Service has got a different program. There's nothing wrong the government coming and saying tomorrow, guys, everybody should interoperability. There should be interoperability as a part of it. We have been health exchange business for the last 10 years. This is 2000. It's actually Bush's uh, legacy, right? Still, we don't have a common platform. Why is that? Because I can go to Apple today. Even Apple, which is such a proprietary thing in there, which you can't write any programs for them, they they opened up the market to the Apple software developers. If you open up the market, if Cerner or Epic opens a market and say, you know something, guys, it's an open market, you want to do a pharmacy benefit program, build on it. You can attach to it. It's not happening. So that is the problem we have. So. The, the patients, the record cannot follow the patient anymore because we do not have the same technology able to do that and interface into it. So that is the way we have to put our energy into that. And we have to really realize that. The medical record, there's another misconception. Everybody thinks the medical record belongs to the hospital. No. Medical record belongs to the patient. It's not belong to the hospital. I'm a provider of health. I'm selling you something. That doesn't mean I own in your pocket. It's like you go to the supermarket and say, by the way, I want to sell you something. By the way, give me your, your wallet, right? Because I'm going to keep it with me. It's, it's a, it is the things we accept in the healthcare today, we will not accept in any other branch of man, any other industry in this country. So you're right. That's a problem we don't have. Technology has got to step up. You've got to get out of this market share and try to go to the market and keep the market to myself and holding people hostages over a period of time. All these things has got to go away for the public good, right? You got to get out of that thing and do some public good and say, you know something, I'm going to do this. We as a group, we are going to do that. Yes, sir? But that's not going to happen, right? So, um, how would happen? What? Because the incentives for those companies, it's not it's to do exactly what you said. They won't do it. So why don't we build a patient record hub that integrates all those? and takes all the disparate feeds from all the disparate systems and just accepts that that's going to happen. The question is, who's going to pay for it? I don't know. Why do you do it? No, but that's, that is a fundamental issue, right? At the end of the day, are you going to pay for it? If I buy a product, you are going to pay for the interoperability, or I'm going to pay for it. That's a, that is a, the discussion here, to be honest. It all boils down to money at the end of the day, right? So the question will be, right? How can we come together? Right? You cannot just have both of us. That's what the discussion is all about. How a, a healthcare system and technology can come together. And I have a thing. I'm pretty sure that we have enough brain power within the system here. We are probably one of the most intelligent genera generations in, the, in, the, in, the, in this time. At this time, we can almost fix anything. But we can do that. We have to have the incentive. That's so, right. So the incentive to, for you maybe to have the best care, lowest cost care, best outcomes is to have visibility to all of those, that, that, that lifetime journey of a patient. Yeah, I, I, I really f figured not to do that because the price transparency is another big area. We touched upon a little bit on the healthcare side. The problem with technology side is your price transparency is not there. I cannot ask you, you will come to me and say, Ram, I'm giving you the best possible deal. This is the best you got. Then I find out two days later, talking to other CEO, he got about $1 million less than I got. Right? Because the problem is, why can't we just publicize that? Why should the contract between Cook County and, you know, Cerner should be a secret? Why can't we that a web page? I can go there and say, 
how much they pay ration, how much is Chicago paid for their thing, how much I'm paid. Why that should be even be a, a question about? Why can't we be transparent about? You want the mortality to be transparent. You want the infection rate to be transparent. You want in the readmissions to be transparent in our organization. Why can't you have a price transparency between the technology? So I know exactly how much everybody pays. So we are in, the, in this, we are caught in the system of business model trying to do a public good organization. So we got to, we have a screws of it. We got to figure out at the end of the day, what are we? Are we a public good organization like the sanitation, police, fireworks? Or are we going to be a business model like IBM, you know, whatever other companies are? So we got to really figure this out at one point. We cannot, we can't be both. And we are trying to do this, you know, manage this in a very, much more difficult way to do it. But it's not a technology issue, we can do it. Yes, it's, it's a, a policy issue. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, Dr. Raju, thank you for sharing today. And uh, you scared me a little bit when you said you don't really know where the patient is mm -hmm. for my next visit. Mm -hmm. I'm a little scared how they are going to treat me. Okay. Say it again? Sorry. For my next visit to the hospital, mm -hmm. I'm not very sure how they are going to treat me because you said, you know, sometimes you don't have systems where you don't know where the patient is. You know, he's not, you haven't seen that? You walk around the hospital, the people are looking around for it. I said, where am I going now? And you know, somebody stopped them in the middle. Where is a pharmacy, right, as a part of it? Then I'm shocked that you know that. It must be, it must be you know, living in a better world. Any hospital, I'm not talking about Cook County. Any hospital you go there, there is an issue with that, right? The question is this, right? Why can't I have a kiosk in different languages? I put it there, I go there, and I press on it. It tells me. Ram, you're here, your clinic is second floor, this is the direction. It basically shows you the direction to take care of them. Why can't I give them things which basically, you know, with GPS, when they're inside the system, be able to navigate them and said, turn right, turn left, get up there. They sound very simple. To yeah, me, right? you know, but we don't do that. Supermarkets. I know, right? but it is not, but you don't do that. Where do you do that? Why are you not able to have that? When you are really in, a, in pain, and you're walking with the crutches, and you're trying to figure out where you want to go, and you want to know where the orthopedic clinic is, why do you have to go wander around the place trying to figure out where the orthopedic clinic is when you are really on your crutches? So, I, I, I was always thinking that I am the one who is last. So I was thinking, <laughs> I, I have a problem, okay? <laughs> but didn't realize the system is such that... It you know, is, it is nothing to do with the public system, private system. It is in every hospital system, right? Why can't I know that my doctor, you, how many times you wait in the emergency in your house, half his doctor's thing, when you know the doctor is not even in the building? Sure. Even the private practice, you go there and wait in the, in the room, and they say, oh, doctor will see you, but you know the doctor is not even here. He's probably about 15 miles away trying to drive somewhere, right? Why can't I put a GPS on doctor? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think there are two places which you do not question. One yeah. is, you know, at least I realize that one is a doctor, one is a, you know, probably a, you know, religious place. You know, you go there and you don't really question. You do whatever they want. The ACA that, is all about is. accountability. The ACA gives a power to the patient. It is a patient empowerment moment. Otherwise, it will not be a problem. Yeah, right. Right. Thank you. I do have a question. Sure. <laughs> So you have talked all about automating and GPS and access. Have you thought about working with the other than say you are in Cook County hospitals, smaller clinics to reach out to serve the community in a smaller uh, pieces rather than doing it all ourselves? Sure. And by the time our systems are up and, and we are we have all the iPhones with everybody and all the taglines with every uh, uh, patient, it probably will take much more time. Yeah, I think uh, the county care is a, a model program for the country in which we are able to work with all federally qualified health centers across Cook County, all the safety net hospitals, all the academic medical centers. We created a huge network of this. The problem with that is how do we link them all together? That is a problem because some federally qualified health centers got you know, IT, patient records. Some of them are paper records. Right? Some of them are different systems. We are able to do that. How do we seamlessly transfer the information from one place to another place? That is the problem. It is not working together because there is no common platform for us to do this. And it adds a lot of time and complexity and anxiety to the patients. But that is, that is the problem, right? 
That's another piece of yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I have a question as much as I do a suggestion, sure. which is we should have you go talk to knuckleheads in DC and probably teach oh, them God. something and let them know <laughs> what it is is at stake, which is people's lives. So I just want to commend you on your amazing <laughs> speech up there. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Any more questions? Okay. Thanks, everybody. Good. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Oh, I gotta wait for more. Oh, picture taken. Okay, good. Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> I do want to tell people that the Cook County Commissioner Robert Steele has joined us. So please uh, pull him aside and talk to him. Um, and one one thing I do want to say is um, I I. I'm coming from a healthcare family background, a doctor and a nurse for parents and two doctors, and so I've taken a special interest in healthcare. And one of the best books I've ever read about what's going on in healthcare is called The Innovator's Prescription yeah. by Clayton Christensen. Yeah, and it talks about the three competing business models. So it's not just one, one business model, model right. that's messed up, there's three yeah. totally different. Clayton models. was my professor when I did my MBA. Oh, so there you go. Like there you go. So, I'm, I, as a technologist, I'm really jazzed at all the opportunity there is to have here. And I hope the other technologists in the room will help, help Dr. Roger. Sure. Okay. okay. You want, there's okay, time. Yeah. okay. Um, would like to invite uh, Honorable um, Doc, uh, Dorothy Brown. Oh, she's she's, just stepped on. She did. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like and her, uh, yeah, our so. brand ambassador. See, that's the infamous problem right here. <laughs> <laughs> Bill Cartwright. Bill, could you please join us? And um, let's see here. Who else is here? That's all. That's all? Okay. Um. Thank you. When we le learn from the leaders that have done it, isn't that awesome? And these are, you know, he, he literally said, we won't need your help. I didn't get the answer when we'll pay you. Yeah. So that is the answer we yeah. still need make from sure, him. Make sure my payment checks are uh, in the bank. <laughs> that is there. But we definitely have a need, and there, yes. there, there definitely has a, a leadership willingness to make things happen. And with that, we, can we give a very good round of applause to Dr. Thank Rajiv? Thank you. With that, oh, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. It's just a little appreciation. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Can you get him in? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. I really like that. Everything you said makes so much sense. Thank you very much. Let's see. Thank you, Bill. Uh, Great job. Yeah, thanks. And then I will, I will just take this heat and uh, invite our host, Microsoft, to welcome the, uh, our, uh, our attendees. And he was going by the, by the scheduled timings, and we were a little bit ahead. So. Um, yeah. It's a little one right here. Here, here. Yep, it's on. Good morning. No, that's okay. I, nobody has ever complained of me being this quiet. Yeah. I'm pretty loud. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. I got it. Good morning, and um, welcome to Microsoft. Uh, it's an honor and a pleasure to host all of you here. And I'd just like to take a minute uh, to introduce myself and uh, my colleague. I'm Asim Qureshi. I'm the uh, account manager for public sector, managing Microsoft business in Illinois. And with me, I have uh, Laura Krupka, who is with our services team. And um, I had a, we had a 50 slide deck, but I thought, you know, that probably don't want to see those guys standing here talking for 50 slides long, so I'll, I'll make it uh, real short. Um, just a little perspective on, and I'm, it was very, very refreshing to hear Dr. Raju's uh, uh, speech in terms of where the technology is most needed. So I've been at Microsoft about 15 years, and I've seen Microsoft transform quite a bit and where we are today. Um, but before I talk about where we are today and we are going, let me give you a little perspective on where we come from. 
So Microsoft grew up in desktop productivity where you, know, you had individual apps for productivity, which was actually pretty forward thinking for its time if you think about 89, 90, 92 time frame, where you had to buy, buy a big machine just for word processing and you know, um, getting a software that does more than just word processing and, and, and uh, was, was a pretty high tech in its, in its time. But then we graduated from there um, and we looked at the enterprise and we, Microsoft uh, wanted to make the data center more accessible, easy to use for a common man. And, and I think that was a, another big shift in the Microsoft uh, history. But where we are today is probably the most interesting time that I've ever been at Microsoft. Um, it actually aligns with what Dr. Raju was just explaining. We, you know, cloud is a very loosely term, and I think everybody is doing cloud these days. But in Microsoft world, the cloud is really a way for us to bring the innovation, the 8.9 or $9 billion that we invest in R&D to our customers in a much faster way. We do not want to give you the, you know, the mortars and bricks to build the house yourself. We want, we want to be your service provider. So you can focus on things that Dr. Raju was, was talking about, more <coughs> experience that is relevant to your business, whether it's healthcare, whether it's law enforcement, whether it's uh, you know, uh, citizen, services or whatever they may be. Um, so where Microsoft is today, we are looking at and we are providing, continue to partner and provide areas of focus where we would like to partner more with our customers, understand their needs and be able to turn around and customize the solution to exactly to what you are looking for. To use Dr. Raju's term, not cut your foot, but at least try to fit the shoe in your, um, in your foot. So uh, without further ado, you know, that's all I wanted to share. I want to, again, thank you for your, for your uh, presence here. I want to welcome you here. One note, this facility is a very interesting facility. It's not just a big NPR, multi-purpose room. This is actually one of the 10 technology innovation center that Microsoft has around the world. One of them has been Dubai and Chicago is actually New York. All the big cities have them. Uh, it's a very interesting concept that Microsoft piloted about 10 years ago and now it has become mainstream. What we do here is we have a full stack of everything that Microsoft has to offer from a technology perspective. And we partner with our customers, we bring you know, your problem sets and try to envision and try to see how we can solve the problem through technology and actually do more like a mock. Instead of you, know, you finding out, oh, it actually doesn't really fit, you find out here that how it will help solve your problem. So uh, I would encourage you to reach out to me if you're in public sector um, to, to use this facility to your advantage. Um, thank you again, and uh, have, a, have a nice rest of the day. Okay, we're gonna move right along here. Um, I do wanna remind people, I forgot to say something about the raffle at the end of the day, so you wanna stick around for that. Um, I get the privilege of introducing the next celebrity. Uh, his name is Sanjo All, and uh, he is a, a strong, resilient, uh, he teaches people how to build a strong, resilient brand as a technology leader. He's the CIO of Talk Radio. Um, and he's also been chosen as one of the top 100 under 50 diverse executive leaders for 2013. If you look at page 15 in your uh, pamphlet, it goes into lots of detail on his background. And Sanjo, I have to apologize, dude. There's a lot of spelling errors on this page. I did not get a chance to proof it. <laughs> so, so I will turn it over to...